tier list for PvP open world. So I think I think it'll be pretty similar to the leveling, but there, there's going to be a couple things that are a little bit different. So PvP open world. Let's start with the bow again. Um, some people may get mad at this, but I still think it's a B tier. Okay. Why is that? I think it's a B tier for the similar reasons. It's like a B tier for leveling of like, it, there's like a big if with this weapon. It's like the, the if is like, if you're like really good and you're like hitting like 80, 90% of your shots, like if you're like, you're, if you're cracked at the bow, obviously this is like goes up here, but like, that's like the, that's a big if. And for most people, it's a, it's a not very forgiving weapon. Very high learning curve for sure. Yes. Very much so. It's got a very high floor, but a very high ceiling. Um, but I think even like an just an average person that's like in the middle of like skill, like I, I just feel like it's B. I don't know. I, I don't. It's not bad at all. Like it's. I would say it's good, but not much more than that. I mean, it's got decent, decent mobility, because you have like some decent passives. Like um, uh, there's one where you you know that switch to your weapon and you gain haste. Yeah, like archer speed. So I know there's certain rotations that I haven't used the bow a ton, but there's like rotations of like swapping to your bow and then like dodge rolling and then animation canceling and then like keeping up your haste constantly or whatever. Yeah. Th there's certain techniques to that, which is like really good. But that, that that's exactly what I'm talking about though, is like even that passive has like a pretty decent learning curve to it. Yeah, I still haven't learned it, so. Yeah, so like even that's what I'm talking about. It's like there's a lot of these that are like, oh, if you get down like that, like that rotation or that, like it's like super good. And that's like pretty much the entire, like all of the bow. By the way, I would not do this build. I don't know what this is, but we'll just reset those. But but it just can do so much damage. So that's why it's like I don't. Know, I'll keep it up. I'll keep it up B for now. Fire staff open world PvP. Honestly, I think it's an A. Fire staff for open world PvP for similar reasons as the bow of like doing really good damage, but it's just a little bit more forgiving. The autos are a little bit easier to hit. A little bit faster, and um, it's just a little bit easier. Than the bow and the damage is um like the baseline damage is pretty similar if anything the fire staff um can snowball a little bit easier especially once you start getting some abilities in there um but the fire staff i will say definitely has a learning curve because i remember the first time i picked up a fire staff i'm like oh this weapons this weapon's trash even though it's not very good you just need to give it some time to actually get to like you know a decent level with it and then stuff like you know stacking the burn burn debuffs on people and then max and like incinerate and stuff like that incinerate is a crazy ability i mean it can it completely just destroy you like from 100 health to nothing and it's like one of those weapons you're like fighting against you're like what just happened and and because of that it's like it's for sure an a tier because it has a little bit of a lower floor than the bow but a little bit lower ceiling but i think just starting off it's yeah i think fire staff is an easy a tier for open world pvp gotta do that <laughs> like i just um it, i don't i can't count how many times i've been killed by a great axe in pvp open world it's ridiculous it's so dumb but it's so good yeah it's got pretty much everything you need for pvp it's got it's got mobility with the with charge um it's got like uh it's got cc with gravity well and then it just sticks to people man like once you start autoing people like heavy attack and light attack it just sticks and it just does so much damage like with if you start getting passes like heavy pull um gravity and during strike adds grit so like there's a couple of these passives that add that stickiness even more it's got good sustain with a lot of these passes on the left tree and most importantly bloodlust for open world pvp this is what really takes it from like i would put it if without bloodlust i think it would be like a but bloodlust specifically is what makes it s and for those of you who don't know, you move 30% faster and deal 15% more damage when looking at a foe within 15 meters. So if you're within 15 meters, it's just pretty much a flat 30% like haste constantly. You can't outrun it. With the combination of bloodlust, charge, and gravity, well, you just can't outrun a great axe. Yeah, S tier. 100% for open world PvP. Hatchet. Hmm. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. For open world PvP. High B. A high B maybe even a low a it's got obviously great sustain because of berserk it's got great movement because of berserk but the reason it's like staying at a high b low a is i just think the fire staff i think the fire staff ranks higher than the hatchet because of it's it's got a little bit better mobility it's just hard to stick to people with the hatchet like it's like the hatchet is like 
the hatchet's like here, like S tier, if like someone's just fighting you face to face and just like is constantly left clicking you and not moving, like it's here. Uh, I mean, hatchet will like destroy you like just face to face with Berserk Pop, but like that's obviously not going to happen most of the time unless you do my build, the hatchet life stuff, and you bait people. But we can talk about that later in another video, but that's why I like it. Um, but otherwise, if you're just running around with it open world PvP, I think it's probably slight maybe slightly edges out the bow, but I think it's on the same tier list as the bow for open world PvP. Yeah. It's above average. It's good, but it's, I, I think the fire staff and great axe are better though. I mean, feral rush is your only like gap closer. And if you hit somebody in the back, when you have this maxed out, it, it uh, roots them for two seconds, which can be really nice. But the problem with fail rush is it's a very long ability to cast. Yeah. So like once you cast it, you're committed. It's like a big, like, swipe and then swipe on it so it, it's very easy to miss and it's very easy to dodge a lot of the stuff with the hatchet so for that i'm going to keep it at b for open world pvp ice gauntlets this one's tough for me i'm thinking i'm like is it better than hatchet for open world pvp so the big thing for ice gauntlet that's like great that's ma making me consider it's borderline a tier is because of ice shower i mean the combination of ice shower and ice storm you can i mean you literally just can't move and if you get like the heavy freeze passive you know you just people can't move and you do like very decent damage too with it and it even shines even better if you're like open world pvp with like small groups that it even, it even shines more when you're like 2v2 3v3 4v4 is better than the hatchet is it as good as a fire staff i don't think so i don't think it's quite as good as a fire staff for open world pvp but it's better than the hatchet and bow slightly better i think i'm put it at high b i'm put it at high b for open world pvp people will sleep on this one too because a lot of these like i said it, like it's, it requires a decent amount of levels in it and i think these three ability specifically is what makes it really good i mean entombed is a really underrated ability too it's really like your fail safe ability when you need to get out of a bad situation i'll say if it's like group pvp i mean there's a lot of caveats with all of these obviously but if you're like in a group i think this moves up here for sure but just in general if like because i'm considering like solo like two like solo and small groups like i'm considering both of those yeah if you're in a group i think it's a easy a but in general I, i'm gonna put it at a high b for sure life staff yeah it, um yeah it's just uh it's not obviously the, the 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 only downside to the life staff is the lack of like mobility and gap closers but you don't really need that with the life staff because like you just sit in your heels that's it i mean it's it's a super it's yeah it's not very i'll, I'll say it's not very well for a lot of people i think they'll find it maybe not that fun for open world pvp because of that because there's not a lot of especially if you're like bloodthirsty and you're like track if you're like hunting people and stuff like that it's you know it's not the best but like just for the but just overall for open world pvp i, I think it's like a it's a, a low s a low s you just can't die with it i mean you can easily it, the reason it's s is because it's really the only weapon here maybe the great axe too but it's for sure the only weapon here that you can easily 1v2 1v3 in open world pvp when you pair this with like a great axe or a hatchet and that's that's personally my build is the life staff hatchet because like i like i was like i was saying earlier is like hatchets would be like high tier if like people are just like on top of you just like swinging at you and not moving and you can do that when you pair it with a life staff and you bait like a group of two or three on you and it's yeah. the best feeling in the world <laughs> as long as people bite you know if they're running then it's not that great right yeah so it's it's not that but but at the same time you're not gonna die so paired up with the hatchet or great axe it's definitely S tier, but even by itself, it's S. I mean, it's a low S. I'll say it's a low S. It's a great act. Probably slightly edges it out overall, PvP specifically, but yeah, I'm putting it up there 100%. Because like we're talking about, it does good damage too. It really does. It, it does almost as much damage as far as just auto attacks go, just as much as the fire staff almost. So obviously the fire staff edges it out with DPS because of like fireball and uh, and stuff like, and incinerate, but like just auto wise, like light and heavy attacks. I mean, it's right there. So musket open world pvp i think it's an a tier i think musket's an a tier for open world pvp 100 percent mostly for the reason of like you're gonna you're gonna end up getting in so many situations where like people are like running away chasing people and you just can't catch up to them but with the musket it doesn't matter <laughs> you just you, with like powder burn and stuff like that you really only have to like hit like three or four shots with most people with the exception of like maybe some like tank tank build and stuff like that but then they're dead they're dead there's so many times i was running the musket and like i hit somebody with powder burn when they were running away and like three four seconds later they're just dead because powder burn does big big damage 
And obviously Musket is hit scan too. Yeah, Musket's great for open world PvP. Musket is so fun, open world PvP. It's so easy to just put people down <laughs> with the Musket. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, and really the reason it's higher than the bow is one, because it's hit scan. It's a lot easier to hit people with the musket because of it's hit scan instead of a like projectile like the bow is. And it's just a little bit easier to use in the bow. Obviously the big downside with the musket is like if someone gets on top of you, I mean, then, then it's really tough, but that's why you should pair the musket with like something like the hatchet or, or like a rapier or spear for that reason. But, um, obviously traps are great. Like if you can, you know, if you get down like your traps, it could be devastating for people but yeah musket's a tier for me for sure for open world pvp 100 percent rapier is also like an a tier really for the same similar reasons as the musket is it just can do so much damage and it can burst people like crazy once again it's kind of like the fire staff in that way of like you'll you'll come across musket users or uh rapier users and you'll be like and you'll just die and you'll be like what just happened and it's just one of those weapons uh, it just does so much big single target damage and e even even in like a small group skirmish of like 2v2 3v3 you can just if you as a rapier you just need to isolate somebody and um and just burst them down because as a rapier you're always trying to isolate people obviously it does kind of fall short a little bit once you like um in aoe situations or like if someone's grouped up on you and you're like in a 1v2 1v3 it's a little bit more difficult but if you, if you can isolate people it, yeah for sure an a tier 100 percent one of the best spear i think spear is uh i don't think spears as good as rapier for open world but i think it's as good as like hatchet spears spears hard because spear i think is best used as like a as like a support weapon for example with the musket like when people get close to you you can easily just cc them easily with the spear yeah but i think i think spears high b for open world pvp i think it's going to be on the same level as these better than the ice gauntlets or better than the ice gauntlets um no and it depend once again all of these of course are depend on the situation because if you have a specific scenario of these can change but just in general i would say no why is that due to the lack of like aoe damage like the ice gauntlet has the ice gauntlet with like the ice storm and the ice shower the aoe so it just depends because if you're talking about like a 1v1 open which that's a different tier list but obviously you'll come across those in open world of like just being in 1v1s then it, i think that changes slightly i think the spear would be better but um I don't know it's on the same tier like I, I think you can make an argument for both sides it, but it's in the same tier for me as all of these are you could convince me to move it around honestly but my, my first intuition just to put it there sword and shield for open world i think is like a c i don't think it's as bad as like some people probably say it is because it's actually got decent cc i mean it's got shield bash it's got divine stance which is great um sustain shield bash is a good it's a good uh stun but the lack of mobility and gap closers is just not fun for open world pvp you know obviously this is great this is a lot better once you're in a group but but even in a group i, th I think it's like c for open world pvp i would agree i don't see a lot of people pvp open world with a sword and shield to be honest yeah i don't i've done it before and it's it's fine i mean it's once again it's one of those weapons it's fine when you get on top of somebody but it's uh yeah and I will say it's the only, it's the only, the shield is the only thing you can actually block range attacks with. So I don't know if it's kind of a fun fact that like you can't block range like a uh, musket or bow with any other weapon except the shield. Oh, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. So. Interesting. So that's the, that's one thing it has going for it is, is that otherwise, yeah. Otherwise it's C, I think. I mean, I don't know if it's quite, like, maybe it's D, I don't know. It might be because because i'm thinking of the hammer i think the hammer might be slightly above this shield sword and shield for the sake of obviously it's a, obviously for cc but path of destiny specifically if it didn't have path of destiny i think it would be a lot lower for open world but it's um it's not a ranged weapon but this is like the closest like ranged ability you have with the hammer and it actually goes a decent distance it really does it really does yeah but it's one of those things too of like it's going to shine a lot more in a group once again because path of destiny a lot of these abilities have like long animations even pass path of destiny so it's going to be really nicely paired if you have like a buddy or two and you can pass path of destiny someone running away while your other group member is like continuing to chase them i don't know i think that i i don't know if anything's d tier honestly but i think hammer slightly better than the sword and shield i guess you could make the argument of that but that might that might trigger some people there but <laughs> I, I mean it's your list true I think that's what I'll do. I think so. I think that's what I'm going with there. Can't believe you'd do that. Okay. All right. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going with though for 
for uh open world pvp open world pvp that's what i'm doing so i feel pretty good about that